I'm Talia and welcome to Around the World in 80 Plates. Now everybody loves a fancy cake after a special dinner and George Washington was no exception to this rule. In fact, after his celebratory dinner at Francis Tavern in 1783, it was after a lavish 13 course dinner, one for each of the 13 colonies that fought in the war, and he capped off this dinner with a beautiful carrot cake. Now this cake was made the old fashioned way with lots of cinnamon and nutmeg. And back in those days, you really had to chop up those carrots and grate them and cook them and mash them up before you could make a cake out of them. To make this cake, you will need five carrots chopped, one and a half cups of sugar, six ounces of butter, five large eggs at room temperature, three cups of all purpose flour, since all of our recipes are going to be gluten-free, I would recommend using Bob's Red Mill. It is exactly one-to-one -one comparison. You're also going to need two teaspoons each of baking soda and baking powder. You're going to need two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and half a teaspoon of salt. The first thing we're going to do is simmer these carrots for about 25 minutes with a cup of water. Once they're cool, we're going to mash them and move on to the next step. If you find at the five minute mark that you're running out of water in the pot, go ahead and add another half cup to three quarters cup. You don't want your carrots burning. Great, your carrots are now done cooking and we're gonna strain them and let them cool for about 10 minutes. At this point, you're going to puree your carrots and then you're going to preheat your oven to 350. Now that you've preheated your oven to 350, you're going to go ahead and grease your pan. And one thing that I like to do when I'm not using parchment paper is after I've greased my pan, I like to put a little bit of flour in there just to prevent everything from sticking. So if you're not using parchment paper, go ahead and make sure that your cake pan looks a little something like this. And now we're ready to go on to the next step. At this point, we're going to cream together our butter and sugar until it's nice and fluffy. Fun fact, in the colonies, um, up until this point, sugar used to come in a loaf or a cone. Sugar that wasn't imported from England was usually produced from sugar plantations in the Caribbean, and the sugar and the rum was actually a byproduct of making molasses. After beating the butter and sugar for about a minute, your mixture should look like this. Now we're going to add the eggs one at a time until the whole mixture is nice and creamy. Now comes for the really fun messy part of dealing with your carrots. You want to make sure that when you puree your carrots you get all the chunks out because nobody really likes chunks in their cake. At this point you're going to add them to the egg, sugar, and butter mixture and then we will go on to the next step. So after you've got your carrots into the main mixing bowl you're going to stir everything until it's nice and combined. And everything kind of turns into a nice golden orangey color. Make sure all the carrots are fully mixed in. You don't have any lumps from the sugar or the butter or, God forbid, the eggs. So when everything is combined, your mixture should look like this. And now it's time to add the dry ingredients. It's important when you're combining your wet and your dry ingredients that you don't just dump everything in at one time. Add the dry mixture in a little bit at a time. To make sure everything is pretty well combined, you don't have any lumps, you didn't overdo it. That way if you've made any mistakes in your measuring, you can compensate for that and make sure that your mixture is going to be very, well, cake batter like when you're ready to put it in the pan. So I would say add about a third at a time, mix until everything is combined and then add the next third and keep going from there. I'm actually very curious to see what this is going to taste like when I'm done. It's not going to taste like a traditional carrot cake. Sorry, Mom. No walnuts, no cream cheese frosting. But apparently this was a really popular dessert item at the time, so no wonder George Washington really wanted this for his celebratory dinner. Okay, so far so good. 
actually looking very similar to regular carrot cake batter. Okay, all that is in the bowl. I'm on my final third, and the batter is starting to shape up nicely. What I meant earlier about making sure that your batter takes on the right consistency by not dumping everything in at one time. If your batter is too dry, it means you need more liquid. If it's too wet, it means you need more flour. Now, baking is both an art and a science. You can follow a recipe sometimes to the T, and things either turn out too dry or too wet, like I said, and you have to compensate. Don't be afraid to experiment because that's how you get better at these sorts of things. Okay, our batter is looks great at this point, and we are now ready to pour into the cake pan. Okay, and we are ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna pop this in the oven. The recipe says 40 to 60 minutes, but my rule of thumb is I always put it in for five minutes less than what the recipe calls for. You can salvage a recipe that's undercooked, but you can't really rescue one that's burnt. So, I will see you in 35 minutes. Okay, here we are at the 35 minute mark. Let's see how our cake is turning out. I always like to insert a knife right in the middle to make sure that the center of the cake is done. And it looks like it's pretty clean, but it could use another two minutes or so. Okay, so here we are at the 45 minute mark. Um, as you can see, I've had to poke this cake a couple of times. The center wasn't quite done. So again, I left it in for 45 minutes and the knife just came out clean. So we are going to take this out and let it cool for about half hour. And when your cake is cool, go ahead and cut a slice and enjoy.